Hello guys, welcome back to Alex and channel. Today it's a special video on the channel. Actually, it's my second interview with a great band. First one was Souls of the Otima. You already saw that in a lot of you and I receive a lot of comments about that. These guys, uh, which are live here on the channel from far away because you know I'm in Italy and they are in the United States. I'm talking about a band which is about to release a kick-ass album which is gonna be here soon, but I guess we're gonna let them uh, tell us more. And of course, say hello and welcome to Hungry and Dangerous on Alex and Channel. Hello, guys. Hey, Alex. Hey, how you doing, man? Yeah, thank you for having us, man. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, which, okay, let's do like this, guys. Uh, uh, present yourself, because it's the best thing. Who I have the pleasure to talk today. Sure. Um, my name is Jordan Taylor Mode, and I am the frontman and guitarist of The Hungry and Dangerous. Perfect. My name is Dan Morin, and I am the bassist for Hungry and Dangerous. So, ironically enough, this actually started as a, um, a single that I was doing as like a, a, a part of my solo project that I was working on, and our drummer Matt um, was working with me at the time, and Dan was kind of finding his way into the band at this point, but hadn't officially become a member. And we originally had released the initial single artwork for it. Um, we started getting a bunch of requests, like just messages from just fans of ours from other projects and things like that going like, hey, like, we cannot wait to hear this new band. We can't wait to hear it. We can't. And we're like, no, it's just a single. It's just a single, like, it's not a band. It's not a band. And all of a sudden, and I was like, no, we can't wait to hear this new band. And, this and, and honestly, we just had to, we, I had to call uh, Matt and Dan up. And I was just like, guys, in the weirdest way, I think we might have a band here. And I'm like, are you guys okay with that? <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, oh, like oh, I guess so. I mean, if they want it, they want it. You know, let the fans name it and make it happen. So we're like, yeah, let's let's do it. And that's where it kind of came from. <laughs> Sounds like we we basically got bullied into being a band. Yeah, essentially peer pressure. <laughs> band entirely. I mean, I grew up really big into 80s hair metal, classic rock, you know. My first concert was Kiss, and then eventually led me to my love for ACDC. Uh, but like, this band is really kind of inspired by a lot of things. Like, my biggest influence when it comes to this band is obviously Alice Cooper. I'm tr like, that's something that I'm very big on with this band, is I like those the the theatrical shock rock value. But even though our music's not so shock rock, I just love bringing that sense of theatricalness to it. Uh, so that's something that I try to do as a front man. We try to like innovate and try to create new things for our live show. I try to take that approach. Elvis is another big one for me. Uh, Crash Diet's a huge one for me as well, just for that, that glam. So I understand, yeah. And, yeah, but yeah, so I guess I'm all over the spectrum. Dan, I know you're really into like the more, you know, doom and gloom stuff. <laughs> I'm a little more on the, a little more on the dangerous okay. side. Okay, yeah, which one, you which know? one? I'm curious right now. I, so aside from my love of ACDC, I know it's not necessarily dark. I'm a reverential fan of early Black Sabbath work, especially. Nice. Absolutely. Geezer, Bu Absolutely. Geezer Butler is one of my favorite bassists of all time. So I love, you know, dark, heavy bass lines cool. and stuff. <laughs> so I feel like, you know, injecting a little bit of that into this band on top of, you know, the over-the-top theatrics and stuff like that adds a, you know, it's a nice little addition, I yeah, guess. Yeah, of course. And... Will. How about how, how did you meet guys? Let me know about this. I mean, you are friends from high school, whatever, or it's just uh, it was just a, a case. You know, in Metallica, like happened, Lars Ulrich just put a, an ad and, on a newspaper and Matt Hatfield. Did you did the same? So this is really funny. So uh, Matt, Matt <laughs> and I, story. Matt and I actually were in a band about a, about ten years ago in high school together. We we're in a heavy metal band. And um, we we were we kind of did when we both kind of went our separate ways after that we stopped talking pretty much for I want to say close to like six to seven years, um, and then if you fast fo uh, flash forward, uh, Dan and I actually were both alumni from Full Sail University and we met actually on Dan's final day in uh, class, and uh, on the, and basically their final day at Full Sail is you're presenting like your final project of what you're gonna do after you you know do the degree program. And for some reason, I, um, you know, I was like one of the only rock guys in my, my class that was producing and writing rock songs. And I just happened to see this guy walk up on stage and he starts playing this real just heavy rock. And I was like, OK, this is really cool. And like his whole thing is like, I'm not sure what I want to do. You know, you know, TV's cool, but like I kind of just want to rock. And then what really sold me was he was wearing a Green Bay Packers hat, which I'm a diehard Green Bay Packers fan. <laughs> and I'm like, I got to know who this guy is. So the first thing I go up to him, I'm like, hey, like, 
you know, you're a rock fan and you're a Packers fan. We have to be friends. And he's like, and then we found out we both lived in the same complex this whole time. So we started hanging out and then uh, we ended up starting another project together for a while. We were in this band called Suspicious Minds for a while and we were, you know, doing that. And then um, obviously, you, you know, when we were on tour with that band. That's when I actually reconnected with our drummer, Matt. And uh, we were just at a show one night and started talking about this pro you know, idea of a new project, you know, just something a little more that fit like what I wanted to do and he wanted to do. And we just kept talking about it. And uh, it was really COVID that really brought this band together because uh, Dan has his own home studio. I have Crashland Studios and uh, Matt has his own way to produce drums at home. And we just kind of just, Matt and I kind of started doing these demos together and just working on and working on it. And I would just kind of send Dan like, Hey, what do you think about this? What do you think? Is this cool? Or does this sound awful? Or like, you know, and Dan just kind of kept saying, he's like, no, this is like some of your, this is some of the best work I've ever heard you do. And then like, we kind of just kept going and like, I never pushed it on Dan because I didn't want him to be like, oh, I got to be in like two bands or whatever. And then it wasn't until about last year when we released the single, you know, we we're like, Dan, what do you think? Do you want to do this with us? You know, and he, you know, we sent him like an early version of all that, of the album and stuff. And he was like, yeah, I want to do this. And Dan's brought that, like, just that energy of just, like, let's go. We're going to get this done. Let's do this attitude. And it's awesome. Do you see, I'm, I'm trying to see some similarities uh, in all the bands, but that happened actually with Metallica when they meet um, Cliff Burton. And was the yep. was the same thing. I mean, they saw it play, and they say, "Man, you have to play with us." This is what you see, you did with uh, with Dan, and it's it's uh, it's really cool. So, you know, cool story about it. So, guys, uh, I did a little, little. How do you say it in English? A pick. You know, I, I was like trying to understand a lot of things, and I know that you have some concerts, right, coming up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're going on um we're going on like a little road trip this summer. Uh just kind of support of our debut album. Uh just to kind of get ourselves out there. It's a little, you know, little taste for everybody. Obviously, we're planning for much bigger things in the future with uh Dioptima music and stuff for longer scale tours, but yeah, to finally get ourselves out on the road and see what it's all about. What do you feel about that? Then how do you feel about going on the road playing live? I mean, it's different playing in the studio and then playing with the crowd, okay? So what's, mm -hmm. what's your vibe about it? It's just, I love the rawness of it. I like the challenge of being, you know, you got to make sure you're on your game. If I miss a note, people are going to hear that, you know? So I like the challenge in a personal sense to where it just makes me a better bass player. I think, you know, you got to keep practicing every day to make sure you're on your game because people will tear you apart, especially nowadays with social exactly. media. So I love that aspect of it. I love energy, the energy that the crowd can throw at you and you can throw right back to make the show better and stuff. And then just the also just the pure, simple fact of I just love playing my bass. I don't care if it's in by myself in my room. I don't care if it's in front of a million people. Playing bass is fun for man, me. That's 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 the fucking spirit, so, and I, I'm I'm totally agree yeah, with that. Man. That's 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 how you do it. You know, the love for what you are doing and for uh, for music, basically, because this is it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people at these days, my point of view in my channel of reactions, I uh, had the chance of listening to a lot of bands, and um, I was like, you know, a lot of bands, good bands, but some of them, man, I was like, okay, uh, you you're like struggling. And I can see that, I can feel that. So, because they were doing only for, uh, not for the sake of the music, but for something else. Yeah. Yeah, that's where you can get, you know, those, I guess, in a way, false expectations or whatever, or just expectations in general, exactly. which can kill you. If you can go into it without just anything and just, yeah, I just like playing my bass. Cool. You know, it's a lot harder to be disappointed that way, <laughs> I think. True. I think that's... I think that's one cool thing about this band too is when we all came together we all realized that like the, the motto of this kind of this band is like even if we weren't doing this for you know if we weren't already doing this we would still be doing this like we love to play live we love to play music we love to do this and even if we didn't have an album on the way or even if we weren't doing you know the stuff with the record labels and things like that we'd still be playing in bars we'd still be playing doing stuff like it's it's never really been about the money, even though you know obviously money's nice. Of course, it's really just for the love for the love of rock and roll, and just fulfilling that urge in our souls to want to write and produce good rock music. And 
that's you know I think that's something that we all really admire and share and I think that's what makes this band really special true let's not forget the free drinks from the bar <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's sweet that, that's good too so uh, you are under right uh, the label it's uh, Diotima Records right the guys from Souls of Diotima Correct. that I like I said at the yes. beginning of the video I had the chance to meet the guys uh, they are doing great 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 music and uh, they give me the chance to, to meet you guys and listen to you I'm really curious to hear the whole album, so that this is what I want to talk about right now a little bit. This album, how many tracks, where, when it will be out, and of course, uh, I guess, and I know something uh, that you guys did, and I appreciate it a lot, because nowadays, everybody, yeah, you can find the album on Spotify, or on digital platforms, but you guys, I know that you wanted to do it in an old-fashioned way, let's say like this, in a CD, right? Oh, absolutely. And that's, that's yeah. amazing. That's Agreed. the good thing of it. I mean, a CD, it's, it's, it's something, it's, it's the real music in there, you know? <clears throat> oh, I agree. I mean, if, if, I mean, for all of us growing up, even though we may be, you know, younger cats on the scene, I mean, there's nothing like going to a record store, getting a brand new CD that just came off, you know, off manufacturing, record store day release. You're getting that. You have the physical mm -hmm. product. Like, there's nothing like that. And, like, especially when it's your album. Like, yeah, maybe CD, the CD format's dying out. But for us, it's, you know, that's still important, especially for the fan, you know, diehard fans. So they want, they want more than just a download. They want something they can actually grab, they can hold, they can listen to, they can dive into. And... Um, that's something that we wanted to really make sure we did with this album and yeah, it's gonna it's you know After two years of work, you know blood sweat and tears. It's finally making its way to release on July 22nd through Dioptima Records and uh, Rock Shots Records and uh, that, I mean we're really excited because we actually had our good friend Dylan Sheridan uh, Who did all the artwork for us on this we had a really fantastic model who came in and did this really cool theme for the album So there's a lot of really cool in the booklet. There's a lot of really cool uh, you know, rare exclusive photos with that, really cool shots, and, you know, the whole theme is, it's its not even about just like, hey, this is who we are, even though that's what the album's supposed to be, this album's supposed to just be like, just take you through a ride of rock and roll that I don't think is really out there right now. Exactly. I mean, if I may say so, yeah. Why do you think about it, Dan? Yeah. I, yeah, I agree with that, you know. I, I put it as, it's like the new classic rock, I'd say. I guess, you know, I, th I feel like a lot of garage, I get a lot of rock and roll almost feels like garage rock. Not that I'm trying to take a shot at garage rock, garage <laughs> rock, if I can speak English <laughs> properly. <laughs> but I don't know, it's just never been my thing, I guess. I just miss, I just miss the grit of a heavy sounding guitar that used to permeate rock and heavy metal all the yeah. time. I shouldn't I, say heavy, I, I but you're just you. rock I in general, you, you know? From starting from Motorhead, Going on, you know, the 80s, those days, yes. those days, it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's really, it was really beautiful. So, which will be the date when this album will come out? July 22nd uh, officially drops on CD and uh, digital platforms. And uh, like I said, uh, CDs will be made available. I think it'll be in stores uh, at a good amount of places across the world, especially in the U.S. I know like Nashville, Florida, Jersey, a few other spots, but... Rockshot Records will also have it on their website, so you can download it from there or buy it from there as well. Um, yeah, I mean we're we're really excited to get this out there, like I said, and hopefully you know we're gonna get it in stores as much as many places as we possibly can, you know, so at least people can have that you know feeling of going and buying this album. Yeah, I guess you know, I guess it's stores. going to be really cool. I mean, you guys, for me, like a, a reaction channel, of course. Uh, I heard I heard your sound, and I was like, wait, what? And that's why I was seeing the mix with that 80s, like I said, and it was like, man, and it's, it's not easy to do. It's something really, really hard to do because, uh, you know, there is a thin line over there. And I, w I was amazed. Mm -hmm. I was really amazed. And this guy's, uh, by the way, guys, you on the channel, uh, after you're going to see the interview, of course, it's going to be my reaction to these guys because they have a video out. And uh, you will let me know what uh, you think about it, of course, as well. So, guys, how many tracks is going to be on the album? 
Yeah, so there's 11 total. Um, there's going to be four really cool special uh, tracks that we've added on here with some special guests that I think was, it's kind of like a homage to a lot of our uh, past bands and things like that. So it'll be really cool. We have a really cool cover that we can't wait for everybody to hear as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, two, the two, there's two tracks out now. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Insomniacs and the self-titled. And we do have a uh, new music video dropping the same day as well for a track that has not been released yet. Guys, it's gonna be my first reaction on the channel on the video that is gonna drop in the same day. And why not? I, I think I will do the reaction to the whole album because it's really, it's really yeah. something that it's really worth listening, okay, awesome. guys. I mean, I've liked it a lot. I have to say it. The, 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 the mix between really it was really cool. So let's talk a little bit about what do you think about the music industry that it happens today, and where do you see? Hungry and Dangerous, 10 years from now. Dan, you want to take this one or you want me to take mm -hmm. this one? <laughs> well, <laughs> I think we can both take this one. But I'd say, aside from a 10-year tour, anniversary okay. tour. Cool. Whatever, that, 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 I, that, that's a nice like answer. <laughs> yeah, we're here to stay, man. <laughs> yeah. We're not trying to go anywhere. I'd say... Hmm, that's a really good question. I'd just say, like, try to just grow it more and more. Either, you know, we could reach out. It could be a branding thing. We could make it, we could go in other routes with business, you know, kind of like what Metallica has done. It's one of the things I really, really admire about them is they've been able to turn it into a brand yeah, exactly. as well. They, they are and doing, that, you know, they are everyone doing knows whiskey throughout right the world that they are. Yep. Yeah, they got, they got whiskey. They got everything. What, when they've been on talk shows like Jimmy Kimmel yeah, or Jimmy yeah. Fallon or whatever, just messing shit up, you know? <laughs> they were, but, you know, the, the head, the, I mean, the, the really, the brain uh, behind all that, it's Lars Ulrich. He, he managed to transform this, this brand in, in, in a brand, actually, a band in a brand, like you said. But it, it, it could happen. Mm -hmm. It could happen with, with um, a lot of bands that produce really good music. And in my opinion, guys, you are doing that. So this is, I hope this is going to be the first album in a lot of them to come. That is yes, definitely sir. the goal. I mean, our, I, I told Dan this about a year ago. I was like, my goal would be to have at least 10, uh, 10 uh, Hungry Dangerous albums by the end of the decade. Well, obviously, we'll see about that. But, you know, that's, I mean, the goal is just to release. I mean, that is the goal is to become a brand and to be a band that obviously that, you know, when the, our fans come to hear us or new fans come to hear us, they always are going to, they're going to hear what they see, you know, so unapologetic, authentic balls to the wall, rock and roll. That's who we are. And we try not to put too many labels on it. We try not to be so specific with it because honestly, I love the idea of how this music can eventually grow into other things and do other things like, and obviously we're very, very influenced by the eighties, you know, rock music and things like that. And I'm sure that'll never go away. But like for instance, like Dan had mentioned, like who knows? Maybe we, you know, maybe we do do a dark, a more heavier route for something, or maybe we do go a little more synth wavy on something. You know, you never know. And I definitely think the more this band grows, and definitely this debut album gives just a, like I said, a taste of what is to come. Because you know, we we've been working on this for a while, and I think you know, I, when people hear this, we're just hoping it just punches you right in the face and. You're just like, man, I gotta hear that again. Trust me, it <laughs> happens to me. So yeah, yeah it, it's it will, it will about it. I'm I'm sure about that. I don't know. I liked it a lot, uh, honestly, and I can't wait to hear the full album. Uh, how is how is you know the music industry in the United States with this kind of style? What vibe did you get till now? In all the places that you play live. So. Yeah, so I'll tell you, man, I, I definitely think Europe's got the monopoly right now on rock, but uh, you know, especially with production and album release or even just festival and support, you know, especially, I mean, if you go to South America too, but America's kind of an interesting niche when it comes to rock music. I mean, obviously we kind of have our work cut out for us, even though we are based out here and we are American and stuff like that, it's, we still have to, you know, work to get, you know, just to get people out to a, to a rock show, you know, it is what it is. I mean, that's obviously streaming it doesn't pay out much, so there's not much funding for music these days. And uh, I think rock is is in a weird progressional phase right now, where I think you know, obviously, you see other genres really kind of becoming new and gen, you know, not really gentrifying, but like 
kind of becoming new and trying new things out. And I think rock is kind of on the cusp of that because I feel like we're all trying to hold on to what made rock so cool. And I think there's been a lot of experimentation, if I may say so, with rock. And I think that we're on the cusp of a new wave of just something really special coming with rock. And we may be a couple years out with that, but a couple of years from now, I think the Hungry Dangerous will be riding that wave pretty hard. And I think people will be, you know, when people are ready to sign on to new rock in America, you know, we're going to be the ones there waving the flag like, hey, we've been here all this time. Nice. <laughs> what do you think about it, Dan? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say kind of the same thing. Um, yeah, definitely a lot of experimentation. I think it's just trying to find its its right I guess mainstream sound, if that makes any sense in a way, because you know, like if you look at the '80s, feel like rock that was kind of rock and roll's heyday, if you will. That was when it was reaching its commercial peak, at least here in this country, in my opinion, at least. But there are still there are still rock and roll tours and heavy metal tours and festivals going on every year. My Instagram feed is full of, hey, this big festival is going on or this big tour is going on. So things are still happening out there, or whatever. But I guess it's not so much as radio friendly. You know, I'll just drive down the street and I hear loud hip hop or electronic music or whatever. I don't hear anyone blasting Metallica very often or Slayer or Black Sabbath. You know, I'm not hearing that as much anymore. Yeah. So, yeah. but there is still Sad a demand. But true. Like, you know, like just, just, just to say. Like <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys. Okay. Let us know about the last thing I'm going to ask you. Some dates for, uh, because there are going to be people who are going to watch this interview from the States, where uh, is going to be some dates, some places that you will be live? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, I, yeah. So obviously we're going on a short run th this summer. There will be more to come, uh, but this one is going to be more focused generally on the East coast of the United States. So we do start off in Nashville, which is in is obviously a little more west, but we're going to be playing at Springwater Supper Club in Nashville, Tennessee. It's going to be a really good way to start the run, and then we're heading up to uh, Philadelphia to make our Philadelphia debut, uh, which is going to be really, really special. We're playing at the Fire, and that's a really cool, iconic venue in Philadelphia. A lot of big bands got their starts there, so it'll be really fun. Uh, and then the next day, we're doing our official album release party in Atlantic City, New Jersey at the Anchor Rock Club. That's going to be probably the most, in my opinion, if I can't speak for Dan or Matt, but probably going to be the most real, surreal homecoming show because I'm from New Jersey, so it's going to be really cool to release the album there. We actually have a local radio station that's going to be doing some promotion with it, and um, we're really going to push this one hard. So if, you guys, you know, if you're in the New Jersey area, definitely make it out to the album release. We're going to do some really special things there. Um, the day after that, we're going to be, we're actually making our New York City debut as well in Manhattan at the Delancey, and that's going to be a really fun show. Uh, actually, Dan and I performed there. Uh, well, actually, you didn't, Dan. But yeah, let's uh, say, hopefully I can make this one. <laughs> we, last time we played this venue, Dan actually was on a flight to come play this show, and his flight got uh, canceled last second, so we ended or got delayed, so we ended up having to do the show without him that night, and he showed up the second we finished Damn. the show. Which yeah, was... <laughs> I got dropped off right as they were finishing the set. Uh, I felt so... so Thank God you'll be able to finally play this one. But then uh, we're finishing up the round one more time in Philadelphia at the Ruba Club, and that's going to be a really special show as well. Um, and like I said, we have our music video and our album dropping on July 22nd as well. So Perfect, guys. I guess the album is going to be there, you know, for the people who, who comes just to say hi, to say hi to the band, to, to maybe get a signature from you guys and have, have the album, of course, and buy it. Absolutely, yeah, and we'll also oh, have yes, a brand. Please. We're gonna have a really special merch line as well for this run. So definitely come out if, if you want some cool merch. This is the time to come out. Perfect, <laughs> perfect, definitely. guys. Guys, thank you for being here with me. I know you have a lot of things to do. I want to keep you here, but really, it was a pleasure. And uh, here on the channel, of course, if you can, when the album is gonna came out, there's gonna be a video which I'm going to react to, and then, like I said, a promise to these guys. Uh, a reaction to the whole album in one single video. This is what uh, is going to happen here on Alex and channel. And uh, I hope I'm going to be, I was already blasted away by two tracks. So it's nine tracks to come, which after that, I, I hope every single one of them uh, is going to be as cool as the, the, the two of them that I've listened till now. 
Appreciate that, man. Yeah, they definitely. Thank you guys like for ha- <laughs> thank you for being here, uh-huh. and uh, yeah, hope you're gonna have um, like I said a big a big. I mean, this one is gonna be a little tour, but after this one, I hope uh, you can come in Europe and I can come to see you uh, live in a concert. And that may not be. Oh, too we far. want that to happen. So that may not be too far off, my friend. I think the uh, way things are going right now, uh, we've been talking with Dioptima Music about that and. We're, let's just say I can't say anything, obviously, but uh, there's, there's okay. No that's that's cool. You give yeah. us you give I us can't just say a little nothing, bit. No, I, yeah. will, I will I will talk yeah, to just, the guys yeah. from Souls of the Otima, and maybe they can tell me more. <laughs> Anyways, hungry and as dangerous as, guys yeah, uh, we have here on the channel, which I think again a lot. Don't forget, go and uh, on the second of July, go on all the platforms. You can buy the album, uh, download it, buy it, uh, or if you are in the States, of course, or in some places in Europe that you can find the album in a CD, like the old way and like everybody should do these days. But anyways, uh, digital is digital. And I'm not agree with that, like I fucking said before, but uh, you should do that by the album because uh, uh, buying an album means supporting the artist and uh, give him credit for uh, the music and the amazing job that, uh, that every artist, uh, at least, not every artist, because, you know, there are a lot of artists these days that are only going to the computer and just play something and that's, they made a song. But that's my opinion. I don't want to talk about other uh, kind of music. Here, we're talking about rock and Hungry and Dangerous. They are rocking as hell. Thank you for watching, guys. Thank you for being here. And like I always say in all my videos, until next time, stay safe.